Nestled within the cobblestone streets of Charleston, South Carolina, you will find the legendary Pink House. A tiny, one-bedroom row house on Chalmers Street, which has stood for well over 300 years. Though most are familiar with seeing this house looking picture-perfect on social media, its past wasn't always so rosy. As a silent witness to all that took place within its walls, as well as without, it certainly has had some rougher days. The exact date is up for debate, but it is estimated to have been built as early as 1692 or as late as 1712 by a man named John Brenton. Though the house always had a pinkish hue to it, the current pink color is actually just a fresh coat of stucco and paint. However, the gambrel roof is still original, with the curve of its terracotta tiles claiming to have been formed over the workman's thighs. Today, we may call it a house, but this French Quarter building was initially built as a tavern, with a convenient brothel on the top floor. As Charleston was one of the most busiest ports in the colonies, sailors and pirates flooded the area, particularly the area around the Pink House. This was at the time, Charleston's unofficial red light district, and being a short and easy walk from the dock, the Pink House was just one of those places where they would congregate for whiskey, wenches, and whittles. As most of the establishments in Charleston belonged to slave owners, it was quite common for them to offer only enslaved or free women of color to their clientele. For many of these women, working as a tavern girl was the only way to better their lives. Quite plainly, it was a lot more lucrative than any other profession they were permitted. The house would eventually fall to neglect and deterioration as Charleston entered the late 19th century and its red light district began to fade away. It wasn't until the 1930s when it was purchased by a Mr. and Mrs. Morowitz, who restored it and added a small wing on the southeast side. In 1946, the house would sell again to Harry McInvale Jr., who opened a small publishing house on the premises, and hosted exhibitions and art shows, and fully supported the Charleston art scene. Over the years, the house changed hands a few more times. With even more updates, it was subsequently used as a law office, a private residence, an art studio, once again an art gallery, and now, as a private residence. Today, the Pink House stands as one of the oldest houses in Charleston, possibly one of the oldest in the entire country. In addition, it is known to be one of the most haunted houses in Charleston, with many who have reported an unsettling feeling inside and around the home. There are reports of invisible footsteps going up and down the stairs, as well as pale unknown faces that look out at you from the windows when no one is at home. Legend has it that it's the ghost of Anne Bonnie, a notorious female pirate. Others think something may have gone down in the alleyway behind the house but no one will ever know for sure who haunts the place. We're not quite sure just how the current inhabitants are dealing with all of the ghostly activity. Well, to each his own. Nevertheless, I think we can all agree that with the home's bright pink coat of paint and its newfound popularity, it is doing so much better than it did back in the day.